That's wonderful, Mrs. Lara, because you know what? It's everything that I say about museums and what they need to be doing and what they should be doing. Very, very accessible, not necessarily putting the collections in the, in the walls, for walls, but also taking them out and meeting people and connecting and let people connect you know, with them. Uh, some, somebody was talking to this morning about, you know, um, the heritage communities have to connect. No, no. We're saying, and museums are saying, we are connecting. And we want to connect and reach out you know, to people. So that is wonderful you know, to hear that and to see that. And you know what? Open Museum is also one of my favorites, too. Oh, did I say that? This is Glasgow, after all. Um, my name is Loretta Modi, and I work for Museums Gallery Scotland. I'm the collection and engagement you know, uh, manager there, and one of them. Um, before then, I used to be the London and Access Manager until the 2011 when the national strategy then became um, a, a, a reali realistic you know, uh, vision for museums and then my role became collection and engagement, um, making it all strategic. And I have worked for Museums Gallery Scotland for more than 10 and a half years now. Um, oh, I should be looking at the slide. That just structure that you know, around when I was told to do what it is that I should be presenting in terms of best practice, and that will almost you know, fit perfectly with what you have just been telling. I'm actually going to highlight the role of museums, community engagement, and museums as good practice you know, that they will do there, or we encourage you know, museums to be doing, and support for community engagement you know, as far as MGS is concerned. Museums Gallery Scotland, or we call them MGS for short, and I'll just demonstrate some of that with some case studies you know, from museums. Now, Museum Gallery Scotland is the national development body for all Scot and for the museum sector in Scotland. Our role is to work collaboratively, you know, and invest in to develop a sustainable museums and gallery sector for Scotland in line with the national strategy, which you see there. And we work with the sector for over of over 400 museums and galleries, supporting them, enabling them to meet their objectives in a number of ways, and including through strategic investment, which is you know, our funding, advice, advocacy, and skills development opportunity. Catherine, in her presentation this morning, that talk mentioned about definition. We spend so much time talking about what, is, what do we mean by museum. I think the jury is still out you know, for, in some cases, um, because MG, Museum Development Scotland and the sector here in Scotland have taken um, the ICOM definition of museum, which is regard museum as a non-profit permanent institution in the service of society and its development, open to the public, which acquires, conserves, research, communicates, and exhibit the intangible and intangible, which means it's not just about the fixed and also the stories and all of that intangible cultural heritage, that part of what you know, we're seeing today in terms of you know, what you do with your buildings, what you do with the stories behind objects and oral, oral history and things like that, crafts, mentioned and the like is part of all of this and for the purpose of enjoyment and study and education. Now, our diver the museums in Scotland very, very diverse, both independent, larger museums, communities and university museums, local authority museums, and you can have just put a few here just to show some of them in the rural, some of them you know, in their various locations. You have the McManus there, you even have you know, the Police Museum in Glasgow here, and then the Scottish um, Football Museum, and you have the Little Rural Five Folk Museum, and now the Outreach Museum, which is the Five Mark Bus, which goes about you know, to the whole region. Now, before I go anything about best practice or good practice or what, you know, how we support them, I think it is important for, you know, to remember what actually is the value and the role of museums you know, as they are. Very important education and learning resource. Accessible, low cost, from of which you've mentioned in your, in, your, in your presentation, and safe and dynamic environment, learning environment, to inspire what are the objects for? To inspire creativity, learning and enjoyment for people of all ages and of what uses them if, they, if there is no access you know, to them. They have to be accessible. Buildings as a community space for dialogue, debate, and, you know, and, and communications. 
social cohesion and opportunities for older people and young people to meet and exchange ideas, part of which, out of which you get intergenerational learning, agent of civil change and social cohesion, promoting inclusion and social justice, which is what Open Museum is really based upon. Um, and I have brought in, you know, they say to me to talk about, you know, community engagement and museums. Well, what is community engagement? Some of us who are here, and if all of you are here yesterday, you were here yesterday, you would have heard all about community engagement from Breeders, Trans, and Asper. But all of us saying the same thing. It's about a process there. It's about the principle of, you know, getting people to talk to you, making sure that they get involved and in decision making, they have a say, not just have a say, not just consult, but also part of, you know, helping the process of, you know, shaping and empower them to be able to make, uh, achieve a beneficial change. Now, for museums, it's more than that. It's not just about the art or whatever that defines. There are so many frameworks that actually guide museums you know, in the work that they do and in the type of offerings you know, they make and how they make their collections accessible. We have the Code of Ethics for museums. And one of the principles there is that you know, museums and all of them who work in it should aspire and make sure that you know, pu ensure public engagement and for public benefit. Then you have the Equality Act 2010. That is an obligation for all organizations. Although the smaller museum, although it didn't say who and what, that is the duty. But everybody, all smaller museums, everybody have to actually make sure that everybody has equal access. And if not, why are you there? Because you are within your local communities, museum has to be there. You have obligation to that. That act pro protects against discrimination, but promoting inclusion and fairness. And then we, of course, we've heard about Community Empowerment Scotland Act mm -hmm. earlier yesterday. It's still about the principle of you know, empowering people to actually be part of decision making. And the National Standards for Community Engagement you know, has the best practice principle for the way in which that government agencies, communities, and the like, an organization engage with the communities. It is not about communities engaging. It is also about you know, these organizations and bodies engaging with the communities. Most importantly, for museums is if going further, which is the national strategy. And I've, it has six aims, but I've highlighted the main ones that are actually you know, are very relevant to what we're discussing today, and which is you know, this weekend, and which is the maximizing the potential of our collections and culture for the benefit of the people, strengthen connection between museums, people, and places to inspire greater public participation and learning and well-being, and then to foster a culture of collaboration, innovation, and ambition. The things, the, this is the first time the sector will be having one common strategy to which everybody you know, target and guide their work and shape it with, and actually then impact and then make, me, measure their impact and differences. But what are the opportunities within the museums? Some of that had been highlighted earlier today and you know, uh, before me, and in your, but just to let you know, the biggest part of that is volunteering. Some of our museums and smaller ones are actually volunteer led from everybody in their trustees, curators, front of house, most of the communities and independent museums are volunteer led. Some of the bigger organizations have volunteers working with them. So there are different you know, roles in, in museums you know, that people do. And there are so many opportunities. You know. In terms of workshops and exhibitions, you can actually participate, not just as a recipient, but also part of you know, the planning and you know, designing of all of this. There are talks. There are demonstrations, guides, and outreach. And research and interpretation and skills, these are opportunities you know, for getting involved with museums. And as part of what I said, co-curating, co-designing, and co-delivery in, in partnership you know, with communities. So what are the good practice? Some of which have been touched already. And I believe that you know, the museums do this, but there is still a long way to go in terms of you know, that holistic and integrated approach. But that is what they strive to do. That is what MGA is supposed to be supporting them to be doing. And that's what we're hoping we're doing. The participatory integrated approach, you know, it means that communities are the heart of what we do and what we offer. That is the museums. And providing a welcoming, safe environment and platform for effective engagement. 
Communication with museums or museum staff for what we do should have to be a two-way. It doesn't start as we consult you or we inform you or we want you to tell us. It's about, you know, it has to be an ongoing. And that's, that's the way we build relationship. And that's the way we build collaborative working. And that means seeing communities as equal partners, bringing their own local knowledge and expertise into it, and museums bringing their own. Respect is there, and also the fact that by doing that, everybody is allowed to actually participate at different levels, not certain level, and then you cannot do it, or you tell us, I will go and do it. No, we want to see that, and museums are encouraging that more and more in terms of collaborative you know, working. That empowers the communities, because what it is is preparing the ground, and the, the more we know about you know, the communities, the more we're able to actually support them in doing what it is that they want to do within the museums and actually engaging the objects to become meaningful in the experience. And then that's part of the code delivery as well. So what is the beneficial? I really want to move from, before saying that, I want to go to some of the case studies first and then I'll go back to the slide. Um, some of the case studies that I've highlighted here have demonstrated how some museums have actually been encouraging you know, people to help them to shape their services and offer and activities. Here is Strachneva Museum, it's a very small museum in the rural part of Scotland, and they've actually calling the young people, they want to engage more and increase their audiences or diverse their audiences, but they really want to engage young people. But they find out that they've been finding it difficult. So what they have done is to actually get young people, go to the school, get the young people in, to come in and actually do activities and tell them what it is that they would like to see them do and help them to shape all of their you know, learning activities. The learning and access officer actually worked with the young people. They came in, they took, they did activities and they wrote all of the, the vision for the museum, what it is that they would like to see them do with young people and how they can you know, galvanize that the momentum of you know, working with young people. And that actually has helped because now it has increased the young people coming into the museum, wanting to use the object, and then telling, telling their school about what is available to support you know, the delivery of their, uh, of their work and their classwork. And that has helped the museum in shaping their activities and learning and access in uh, project. Here is Glasgow Museum. Recently, they did the Benny Lynch project. Bernie Lynch is, you know, the um, icon. It's a, it's, it's a boxer then, and they, they try to use the museum object to um, remember and celebrate his life. They work with the communities, using the objects in the collections, in their own collection, and allowing the communities to bring in their own collections of memory of, the, of Benny Lynch. What it did is, you know, they were able to come into the museum. They were able to research it. They pulled all of that together, working to them, with them together. And then what they then did was you know, to get the media involved in it. And this is just to actually recognize this person that they call the little king of Goebbels. And you know, it really actually then made a big impact. And everybody, you know, remember what that was. But what is more important is that it's the communities themselves that were the drivers. And they were actually making that sure that they use what is there and that, you know, they celebrated that life. The other bit is, you know, the Western Barton Shire Council Museums. They have singer sewing machine. I myself relate to singer sewing machine because we used it in Nigeria. My mother had one. She wouldn't even allow me to touch it. So precious. But that's a collection that I can relate with. And it's very relevant to many people, you know, beyond Scotland. And and what they did was to bring it out, get the communities to come in and research it and you know, celebrate it and then make sure now they also created a space there for them to learn how to sew using singer sewing machine because it's not just about, these days it's about computer technology, these days things, fancy things. But how do they keep those traditional skills and traditional knowledge going? As of now, that is becoming something where the communities can go in and just use that space and use that as their own, and they can learn how to sew and teach their children about it. And Scottish football museums run a reminiscent project with old people, you know, with people who uh, have a dementia, and you know, Alzheimer's Scotland and Glasgow Caledonian University. 
they use objects you know, as reminiscence you know, project to get people involved in it. And this is the, the same thing for the Glasgow Museum. I'm now going to go back. Oh, how do I go back? Previous, where is previous? Yeah, that's it. Just to say very quickly the previous, you know, in terms of <laughs> previous benefits, you know, for actually working together and working with museum, with museums working with communities, is it enriches the collection's knowledge. It complements the interpretation and display. Somebody said local knowledge. Communities too have the experts and things about objects. They've been there. It's theirs. They know them more. But the more they come in, in there and help, you know, to shape it and and look at the description, we get better, rich interpretation, you know, for and for display. It also helps on the side of communities to build those skills, help them, you know, in whatever maybe research skills and you know some documentation skills and the like. That's part of what the, the communities gain. But it's also instilling ownership and sense of pride in their own local heritage and foster collaboration and sustainability. Now. What is our own commitment, MGS commitment to supporting museums and you know, uh, community engagement? We have the funding. Catherine mentioned accreditation. Although our funding is meant for accreditation, but we also have a small pot of money to help organizations, you know, smaller and independent museums who are aspiring to be accredited, to be accredited, you know, to help them, you know, get that process. So that money is there. Money is there. we don't give money to communities, but we will give money to museums working collaboratively with communities in whatever project you know that they are doing and we strongly encourage that we provide advice and guides for practitioners on how to do all of these things and the resources on websites um a training and courses including volunteer development for communities for museums to work with communities and they are very accessible so as to continue to train them we've run accredited training in-house and you know work-based learning Heritage horizon up to accredited, you know, SVQ levels, and people have gone on to move to get work. So we are also creating work and employment, you know, opportunities for people. We share case studies of good practice and learning through museums, through webs, our websites, and support for volunteering development. And we also now have new museum toolkit, which helps organizations who are trying to make a decision of whether you want to set up a museum or a heritage organization. We have a toolkit and framework that helps you to get there, which includes all of the you know, frameworks and resources and how you get there, helps you to shape whether that's where you want to be or whether you want to be a museum or you want to be an, a, a different you know, resource center. That is there. And what is important is we've got to make advocates. We have to, we have to, make, we have to advocate for the benefits you know, of museums and the value of museums to the funders, Scottish government, and to the public in terms of what is there and what is available. So this is the way we support museums and so that they can continue to actually become sustainable but just relevant and meaningful in their own local um, locality and where they operate. So thank you very much.